Today, we're talking about seven of the best motherboards you can buy for your Ryzen 5000 series chips. Let's get into it. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Adrian Reddish and today we're talking about seven of the best motherboards for your Ryzen 5000 series chips. Let's get down to brass tacks. The qualifications I use in these determinations is one, I'm only suggesting X570 and B550 boards. I think that the, five, the A520, if you just want a board to have, I mean, there's nothing exciting about the 520 other than it's a board. Uh, there's no overclocking on the CPU or the memory at all. Uh, it's just a board. And to me, uh, the B450, I just, I just don't think if you're going to buy a new 5000 series chipset, a 5000 series chip or CPU, why are you using technology from back when? The only reason I would suggest you using a B450 is twofold reasons. One, you can get it stupidly cheap. I'm talking sub $60. Get it. And two, if it has the BIOS flashback. If you don't have a previous generation CPU to upgrade the BIOS, then it's gonna be a headache if you get a B450 board and you don't have the BIOS flashback. But I'm not suggesting either one of those. The second criteria I used was the rear IO panel. You know, what kind of inputs you had, um, what they were, and things like that. The third one is VRM performance because VRMs are very important when it comes to overclocking. If you don't know what a VRM is, it's a voltage regulator module and it conditions the power. What does that mean? Let's say that a CPU needs between like 1.3 and 1.5 volts come into it just for example so what the vrm does is no matter what's coming in on this side of the vrm it it smooths it out so let's say if it's a two volt that come through we'll bump it down to 1.5 or if it's not enough let's say it's um 0.9 volts it'll bump it up so it keeps a level flow of electricity to the component that needs it and having um, good performing VRMs and also having a way to cool them down whenever uh, your overclocking comes because you know having a, a well cooled um, function VRM is gonna help so much when it comes to overclocking and overall performance of your motherboard. So in this video, we're gonna give you seven motherboards, two MITx, two MATx, two ATX boards, and also my overall favorite board for Ryzen 5000 CPU. So let's get into it. The first board. The first board is an ASUS ROG Strix X570i gaming Wi-Fi board. Now, this board is on the expensive side. It's around 300, depending on what website you go to, right? But its performance in a small package is what sets this off from a lot of MITx boards. You can have up to 64 gigabytes of non-ECC memory on this, which is fantastic. On the rear aisle panel, you have four 3.2 USB-A slots, one HDMI, one display port. You also have a Wi-Fi module. It does come with a Wi-Fi antenna if you're into doing Wi-Fi gaming, which I don't know a lot of people that do, but if you have a need for it, it is there. Of course, you got all your standards, you know, gigabit internet, um, PCIe 4.0 lanes. It, it's just your standard X570 chipset. But if you need that high-end performance in a small form factor, the Strix ROG X570i is the motherboard for you. The next one. The next one is the Gigabyte B55i Aros, Aros, I'm not 100% sure I say that. Pro AX, right? Um, the AX is very similar to the X570 Strix, but 
the difference is it's of course it's a b550 board all right so if we go to here and let's look at the aeros pro ax so if you look at the rear aisle panel you, you have some similar things you have less usb ports than you do on the the strix but what the Strix doesn't have that the Aeros does have. Two things. One is going to be BIOS flashback. The other is going to be it supports ECC memory. Why is ECC memory important? Not everybody that builds computers are building them for gaming, right? People like me who build computers that aren't just gaming computers, you build servers where well, you need that ECC memory so you don't have any mistakes and, and things like that. If you don't know what ECC is, is error correction code. It helps with data corruption. It helps in environments where you can't have or data corruption is not tolerable. Usually a server helps a business, right? So if it's just like some work application or if it's a, a database that you can't afford to have data corruption, ECC helps with that. Not everybody needs ECC, but having that as an option, if you're not building a gaming rig, if you're a creator, it helps. But usually for those server options, that's, uh, that's key. The next two are gonna be MATX boards and the first one of the MATX boards is going to be the MSI Mag B550M Mortar Board. That's a mouthful. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Like a lot of the boards we talk about, it they have a pre-installed rear aisle shield, which I'm telling you, if you if you if you ever built a computer, messing around with that rear aisle shield is a headache. And that it comes pre-installed in a lot of these motherboards we're talking about today is good. It does have the BIOS flashback. So if there is another, let's say if AMD is gonna keep this AM4 socket and they come up with a another um, CPU, let's say if you're doing another build and you didn't have a previous generation, that BIOS flashback comes in clutch a whole bunch of times. You don't believe me, trust me, I, um, I know. You don't have as many USB-A slots as other boards. The heat sink for the VRMs is very uh, beefy on this one. Uh, it looks like it, it cools uh, pretty well. Because a lot of people like the PS2 slots for keyboard and mice because the way PS2 works, um, gamers love PS2 slots still to this day, even though it's an older technology, it has this also for gaming and things like that. Next one is the ASRock B550M Pro 4. And the Pro 4, Pro 4 is a favorite of mine. Like a lot of these motherboards, I, I think what really stands out and I think what a lot of people don't put a lot of emphasis on is the audio chip. The audio chip has the 1200 codec in it, so you get a better crisper sound out of this. And unlike in the past where you had to have sound cards, these chips make things one, a lot simpler, a lot easier. And I believe with this 1200 codec, you just get a better crisper sound because for gaming and for creators like editors and 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 things where you you need audio editors video editors where you need a representative accurate sound this 1200 codec does fantastic so the one thing i don't like about this board is there's no pre-installed io shield that really grinds my gears because i hate dealing with those things but other than that that's the only negative about this board. You do have a VGA port, unlike a lot of these other builds. So if you have a older monitor that you like using VGA through for some odd reason, you can do that. Um, you have display port and HDMI port. You also have type C slot. If, if you're using a type C device that needs that, I don't know a lot of applications that do, but if you need it, it's there. And of course it has gigabit LAN ethernet no wi-fi slot or wi-fi module on this and again if you're using this for competitive gaming or if you need to have a real good ethernet connection um a wi-fi module isn't 
going to make or break you. You know, nine times out of 10 people that need to have, though, that fast, fast uh, Internet speed or Ethernet speed, they're usually going to use that over Wi-Fi anyway. All right. We're getting into the the big boys, the ATX form factor. And the first one is going to be the ASRock X570 Tai Chi. I, for one, love the aesthetics of this. The gears, to me, when I think of gears, I think of uh, clockmakers, watchmakers. And to me, those people are so crafty and smart to be able to make watches and make the gears so precise because timing is, I mean, it's, it's a precision thing. And I, I don't like that aesthetic going on this is a fully featured board it has everything you could possibly think of pcie 4 um the rear aisle panel it has the wi-fi module ps2 slots a six 3.2 a slots on the back it has your array of audio jacks on there for all your different audio needs you would need for not only gaming but Video create. I know I'm saying video creating a lot because a lot of people, when they're doing motherboard reviews or any type of PC part review, they always focus on gamers. When the community of people who are PC enthusiasts or who build PCs aren't just gamers, you have a lot of people who edit videos. You have a lot of people who use these motherboards to um, create servers that that will be in production for. A, a myriad of different things, um, uh, just like I said before, database or whatever work application you need it for. So to solely focus on gaming, it, it, I think that that does everybody a disservice, right? But anything you want to do with this board, you could do. The next board, the next board is the MSI B550A Pro. The biggest difference between the X570 and the B550 is PCIe 4. There's more PCI 4 lanes in the X570 than the B550, but as far as being another fully featured ATX form factor motherboard, if you like big motherboards, if you like big cases, I like the ATX form factor and huge cases because I could put whatever I want in there. Yeah, I do sacrifice desk space, but I usually keep them on the ground anyway. But what I make up for is I don't have to worry about uh, when I use a big case and a big motherboard, things fitting. I, have to, I don't have to worry about configurations. I just put it in there. Anything I want to put in there, I can put in there. No issue. But if you don't have a lot of space, I understand why you don't like it, the ATX. So if you go and look at the rear IO panel. Of course, this is another one that doesn't have the IO shield install. Again, that's not a huge thing. You have your standard display port, you have your standard HDMI port, but you also have your PS2, which, you know, gamers love. Um, you have your a lot more audio jacks for whatever situation you need them for two m.2 slots for i mean m.2 is the way to go when it comes to builds i, I don't know a lot of people who are using the unless you're doing a budget build not, not a lot of people are using hard drives anymore for the what i call a scratch disk or your main operating drive no, nobody no but no serious build i know these days now you can use a hard drive for like storage i call it cold storage that's what i use them for you know put a bunch of files and stuff i don't access a whole bunch but yeah yeah it's overall just a really good board and my absolute favorite board of all of these is gonna be i don't know how to say this word the gigabyte arus 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 pro v2 it is a b550 motherboard it is it does have the io shield which you know to me it's important it does like the ps2 slot for you know gaming but i, I don't really use a ps2 motherboard or a ps2 mouse so it really doesn't matter um it does have the bios flashback which i think having bios flashback is a really important thing in, in case amd keeps this am4 socket a little longer and you're doing a new build and you just don't happen to have the previous generations 
uh, um, CPU. I don't know why they're all not like that, but man, whatever. 2.5 gigabit LAN. I mean, just overall, this is just one of the better motherboards out there. Now, the prices um, of these motherboards vary a whole bunch. Um, the X570, of course, it's going to be more expensive. We're talking like the $300 range. And to me, the X570 is one of those boards that's more of a specialty thing. I think if you stick with the the B550 boards in this list, uh, they're usually uh, anywhere between $120, $100, $200. Um, and I think that's a respectable price for a good motherboard. And um, yeah, hopefully you guys liked it. It's a little, <laughs> it's a little scatterbrained, but um, I get so passionate talking about technology that sometimes I just go off on tangents and I get that. That's it. If you like this type of video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like this type of video, give me a thumbs down. Tell me why you didn't like this type of video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one.